Hi, thanks for joining me. My name is Kristen Moffitt. I'm the lower school counselor at the Walker School. And today we are going to just spend a few minutes to talk about emotions and some of the emotions that we might be seeing right now as we are home with our children and we are learning how to balance this life between work and being um, a teacher at home and also the academic expectations, trying to balance all of that as well. So today um, you can see my screen um, and we're just gonna spend some time talking really about how to identify, engage our kids' feelings because just as we are going through this very unprecedented situation, our kids are doing the same thing. And so we're trying to figure out more how to communicate with them, how to read them and to give them some tools of how to express themselves and what they're experiencing towards us. I'm going to push play. All right, here we go. So our points of discussion today is we are going to spend some time talking about um, emotions and how we define emotion and then also the different types of responses that we have toward emotion. Um, we're also um, going to be sharing with you some different tools you can use to help um, your kids be able to identify maybe some of the frustration or heavy feelings that might be going through them as they are experiencing school from home. And hopefully you'll be able to leave here with some ideas of how to put some structure in place so that they have a way to communicate their feelings um, towards you in um, a, a way that is productive and a way that allows um, a plan of response. So how many feelings do we actually have? There, uh, there's a psychologist who um, was able to identify six. And these six, of course, do not encompass all of our emotions. They are actually just the six that could be interpreted best through facial expressions. So those are listed here as happiness, sadness, fear, anger, surprise, and disgust. So those are just the six basic, but there are also emotions known as complex emotions. And these emotions, uh, it gets a little fuzzy because what our face might show what we're feeling um, may not actually be the emotion that we're feeling. So these are not easily recognizable. And sometimes they're a combination of several emotions at once. So an example of those are listed like grief, jealousy, regret, gratitude, worry, all of those emotions that really don't fit in necessarily one box. And I'm sure we're seeing some of our own children express emotions that we may have trouble um, understanding exactly what they're feeling. So when we look at emotion, there are three different processes that happen when we have an emotion and we express it. The first one is we have the subjective experience. This is our trigger experience. So the experience that produces whatever feeling. So winning the lottery, that certainly would produce a pretty happy feeling for me. Um, or if we have a death of a pet, or if we just got exciting news that we're going on a trip, or if we have a math problem that we don't understand and we're becoming frustrated. There's always a situation, an experience that triggers that. After that happens, there's this physiological response. So in the amygdala, part of your brain experiences the emotion and then your body reacts. We know this, this is very much like the fight or flight that we might experience when we feel um, a worry or stress, or we have increased heart rate and our muscles tense up. And when we feel our body changing, we then go into a behavioral response. And again, that is our expression of that feeling or that emotion. We can see that through our body language. We see that through facial expressions and we show how we're feeling that way. So when I go to the doctor's office, I um, see this sign often to help patients to be able to communicate how they're feeling. This is a pain scale. And basically we're trying to say where we are, what extremes we are, are we somewhere in the middle when it comes to how we're feeling? So this is a nice visual representation that doctors give us so that we can give them an idea of where we are. Um, scaling is another technique that we can use at home when we talk about feelings, not necessarily painful feelings, but any feeling. And we are gonna go through some of these different types of scaling techniques that you may be able to use at home 
while working with your kids in order to gauge how they're feeling about an assignment or about um, all the load, the workload that they're taking on or um, something good that's happening. So the first one is very simple. This is a scaling technique um, that we might use for possibly a younger um, student who it just gives three options. And again, we have this stoplight feature here with the red being, and this is very academically focused by the way. So we have um, red light stating, hey, I need some help. We have a yellow light thinking, stating that I need some support here, but I think I've got it. And then we have that green light, I understand, and I think I can try this on my own. So an idea to gauge how um, your child's feeling during an assignment would be to use something like this, a system like this, where you could print this type of scale out or this type of um, stoplight out, and you could have them place um, you know, a penny or a quarter in either the red, yellow, or green circle to give you an idea as you're doing your work where they are. And if you notice that their quarter or game piece is in the red, you know that they are needing some help. And this is a way for them to communicate to you that that is happening within them. And it gives them a way to, to ask this and a way to show what they're feeling without um, feeling that they might be interrupting you. Because we know a lot of times our kids try to protect us by not interrupting us as well. Um, this is another way of scaling as well. So in this um, scaling worksheet here, I like this one because it doesn't assign necessarily a color to different feelings. It allows the child to be able to do that. So if they're feeling good, maybe they might mark that as a yellow, or maybe feeling good might be a green to them, or maybe feeling good might be a blue to them. They'll be able to um, color these different faces and be able to show you what color they feel within those faces. And then, um, this is just another way, I feel this way when, and you could put different types of subjects, academic subjects in this, these boxes. I feel good when I have math. I feel good when I get to free read. I feel upset when I don't understand the directions, or I feel very upset when I feel like I have too much to do. It gives you a nice talking point. And again, I like how the child gets to determine what color means what to them. Another um, type here um, I like as well, because the feelings are not attached to this. So the child can actually make this thermometer be their own feeling of anger, or focusing on stress, or focusing on, um, frustration. They decide what feeling this thermometer represents and they can be able to show you what color they are in that thermometer. I like the child's freedom to be able to um, determine what the feeling is. The next scaling um, sheet I want to show you here uses numbers and again we're this is probably for um, kiddos who are maybe third grade and up and it gives them a nice number scale to be able to show how they're feeling. And they could use a post-it note to put where they are on their scale during their academic time. Um, it also, they could even use numbers. They could hold up a two, or they could hold up a five, or they could hold up a three and give you, and be able to communicate with you while you're on the phone trying to conduct business of your own. They can be able to communicate with you in that way. And then you can, you can let them know that you'll be there as soon as something is over, and then they don't feel like they're interrupting you. Also here, this, um, this, these two um, representatives or sheets here come from the, oh goodness, what's it called? The zone of feelings. And um, what this is, is it gives different ways, first of all, with different zones, let me move my camera here. There we are. Okay, so um, this gives different um, ways to again scale feelings. It's just a different represent representation of it. So we have the blue, the green, yellow, and red, and those are represented by the rest area, kind of like you're feeling that you don't have energy of some sort or that you're sad. Um, the green being that you are in a state where you're calm and ready to learn. 
the yellow meaning that you're frustrated, upset, you feel hyper wiggly, you need to get up and move. And then the stop is where you're in the red and uh, that is more of an anger feeling there as well. So um, the different, here I'll show you here, you can see here in the blue, it has the different feelings or categories for what's in the blue. The green has different feelings here, yellow and then red. It just gives a lot more options um, for children to be able to express how they're feeling. So not only does it give a color code, but then it also gives options within that color code. Yep, zones of regulation. This is what this um, program is called. I knew it would come to me. So at the bottom here, it also says use tools to get into the green zone because this is our optimal zone. This is where we want our kids to be when they learn. We know they're ready to learn when they're calm and happy. And so these tools down here are strategies that our kids can use. They can cut this out or they can use this um, on a bulletin board and whatever strategy might work for them, whether it's taking deep breaths, listening to music, um, doing push-ups, drawing or writing, using a tool. And it gives them so many options to be able to get themselves from red back to green, from yellow to green or from blue to green. And these tools, it gives them so many options. They have to choose what works for them. All right, let me move my face here. Um, so this is a feelings chart. Again, same type of concept, but what I like about this one is that it already gives a plan of what that child needs to do when they are in that zone or that number. And so um, this is something that they would have to create, that they would have to decide what works for them when they're in a two or a four or a five. And so, um, a good idea is if you're busy and you've got things going on or if you're in a meeting then they automatically have a have a plan so when they're in a four they're getting really upset they need to stop maybe they won't be able to visit miss holland or you but maybe they'll take a break and use some putty maybe they have a favorite toy or stuffed animal they can get to hold on to maybe they have some deep breathing exercises they might want to practice but it gives them some steps to be able to use before they come to you if you are um, already busy. And this is just another example of that. Um, I thought the Lego faces were really cool. And so I um, wanted to show you that. And then also I liked how they gave um, really, ex um, really good um, bubbly, rumbling, explode, kind of these um, really descriptive um, words to use how somebody might be feeling on the inside. And so, and then again, I like how they set a plan here for when that child is feeling a four. They're feeling like they're losing control. They know they need some space and support. Here's what I can go, here's what I can do. All right, so there's just some ideas. And then I um, wanted to quickly just touch on the importance of breathing. We in the lower school practice this a lot and knowing different breathing exercises and knowing that when you do reach um, a feeling of frustration or a heavy feeling, we call them, then we want our kids to be able to use these strategies. Now, there is a scientific reason for this. And um, we had a speaker come in October, if you saw her, her name is Dr. Shimmy Kang, and she talked about how our lungs actually work. And she says, when we do deep breathing, there are neuroreceptors on, in our lungs. And when we expand our lungs intentionally, when we focus on our breathing, it sends a message to our brain stating that you are calm, you're at peace, everything's gonna be okay. So it's almost like a trick to the brain. Your amygdala is shooting out this um, emotion. Your body is responding to that emotion as we talked about. And then that breathing is that, that way to get around that. So it's a way of telling your, your brain that's going into fight or flight or freeze that, hey, everything is okay and you've got this. So here on the side, I also um, just wanted to point out some optimal breathing, some of the um, ways to do it, deep breaths, long breaths, intentional breaths, um, and you're activating that relaxation response versus your stressful breathing, which are very shallow, you're holding your breath. Um, this would be that physiological response I was talking about when you are stressed. So you're just trying to trick your brain back into being calm. 
And then mindfulness moments. Um, if you have a lower school student, these are posted every single day. I hope that you begin the day with something mindful with your um, children to set the tone. Um, I just wanted to also show you that um, right here, and I hope this is linked. It should take us, it's, there it is. All right, should take us to, this is the Walker um, YouTube page, but on the Counselor's Corner page, which is located on the Coronavirus Response page, there are um, definitely, there are several exercises listed here, and you can go into them and play them at any time that you want. They're always available, and then practice with your children how to breathe. So there are lots of different types, and um, our kids uh, have enjoyed all of these. So it just it gives a moment to be really creative in the way that you breathe. And um, so just wanted to show you that that is there and that's located there. All right, let me go back to my PowerPoint. And this is our balloon breath. So when we, when we balloon breathe, we breathe in while we trace the balloon around, we inhale and we get back to the bottom of the balloon, we get to the tail. We'll breathe out intentionally while we trace the bottom of the balloon. Again, it's just cute little tricks to help kids remind, um, to remind them how they can breathe. And lastly, I um, just wanted to remind you that this is a time that we are truly focusing as a school to focus on grace, empathy, and flexibility. We know that this is a strange time, it's a weird time, it's a stressful time, it's something that we've never done, and know that teachers, all of our, all the teachers at the lower school, we want this to be a time of connection with your kids and not a time for stress. So I hope that you find some of the tools in here, a way to connect or a way to communicate with your children when it comes to these emotions as we navigate this time together. Please feel free to reach out to me at Kristen.Moffitt at thewalkerschool.org if you have any further questions. And I remind you to stay calm and breathe.